Hello, my wonderful spirit guides. Today I'm going to be finally reacting to some more nine inch nails. And this time we're going to be doing the hefty one, the fragile, disc one and disc two. Now, I may not be able to get both discs done today. And also I'm going to have to take a break in between filming for dinner as I started everything quite late in a day. As I was trying to do this look that was inspired by Nancy from the movie The Craft that um, came out in the 90s, I think. Yeah, um, it was one of my favourite films growing up. I was convinced I was a witch. Me and my two other friends were convinced we were witches. And like when we got to secondary school, we were like, we need to find our fourth witch, which is hilarious. But, you know, it was such an iconic movie and definitely inspired me. But yeah, I tried to do a look based on it today. I don't have the features that Nancy has. Like she has a very different face to mine and everything. But I did the look um, so I've got like the sheer shirt, sheer long sleeve thing on. Um, I've got this shirt, which is a bit tight around the arms, but that's okay. And I've already got foundation on the collar. Eek. But I like the pointiness of it. I got some necklaces. She wears a cross one. Oh yes, the iconic glasses. Um, I'll insert a TikTok that I made as well that um, goes with the look. <laughs> Watch out for those weirdos. <laughs> we are the weirdos, mister. Oh, I love these glasses so much. You know, when I was getting this look together, I was like, I don't really look like Nancy, but I love this look in general and I would probably wear it casually. And I think I will, you know, I think I will. I love these glasses and I actually really like what I've done with my hair. It, her hair's a lot shorter than mine in the movie, but I, I just did my own sort of thing where I flicked it outwards, which I think is quite 90s, with little side parting here. Also got some cross earrings. But yeah, I did my best, I did my best. I was a little glum about it actually. And I was like, well, fun, like, unless you're gonna do something completely transformative with your makeup. You're not going to look like her. And, you know, I wouldn't have had time to do like, to go into too much detail really, because there's only so many hours in a day. And of course, I want to be able to get some of this video done today, especially because it's a long one and I want to get as much done as I can. Oh, I'm just a little bit stressed out, guys. That's all. But as soon as we get into the music, I'm going to feel absolutely fine. <laughs> Everything's going to be good. And yes, like I said, this is Nine Inch Nails, The Fragile, requested by Cass in the Grass over on Patreon. She actually requested it quite a while ago, but there's just been so many others to get to. And then we like rearranged it at some point too. But I'm super, super, super excited for this. I'm going to read what Cass said about it. Okay, so this is what Cass said. The Fragile came after the downward spiral and continues the exploration of depression and addiction. Sorry, I haven't got my glasses on and it's all blurring together, but I can't wear glasses and glasses. That's too silly. So I'm just going to fight through the blur. The Fragile came after the downward spiral and continues the exploration of depression and addiction, though it's not a concept album like the downward spiral, though I definitely still suggest looking at genius song explanations. Of course I will. The album was initially received very negatively by critics, which is pretty funny because it's now regarded as one of Trent's best works by fans and critics alike. Funny that. Funny how that happens sometimes, isn't it? Critics aren't always right. The Fragile includes a lot of instrumentals. Trent explained that Fragile was an album based on a lot of fear because I was afraid as fuck about what was happening to me. That's why there aren't a lot of lyrics on that record. I couldn't fucking think. An unimaginable amount of effort went into that record in a very unfocused way. He also con considers the album bleaker than a down would spiral saying i wanted this album to sound like there was something inherently flawed in the situation like someone struggling to put the pieces together the downward spiral was about peeling off layers and arriving at a naked ugly end this album starts at the end and attempts to create order from chaos but never reaches the goal it's probably a bleak album because it arrives back where it starts with the same emotion, the album begins somewhat damaged and ends ripe with de with decay. I hope you love it. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, it is Halloween month, spooky month. And this all sounds very dark and sad and depressing, which in turn can be a little freaky and haunting and spooky, right? I'm, I'm, oh yeah, I have no idea how this is going to go, but oh. Oh, but first of all, if you want to see this video completely uncut, then please do become a patron. It's super, super, super helps out the channel. I actually wouldn't be able to do these videos without the patrons. There's just no way I could do it um, financially. So truly, it is so meaningful to the channel. You are the backbone of this channel if you become a patron. There's lots of stuff over on Patreon, like uncut videos, including this one, song request videos. Also, I'm going to be reacting to two horror movies this month. Um, maybe one is already up, I don't know. But yeah, two horror movies this month that was suggested by the Patreons. And yeah, there's just lots of little things over there, but it really, really, truly does help me out so much. So yeah, if you can become a Patreon, amazing. But I also know Know that not everyone can. Therefore, just like, comment, subscribe, share the video, all those lovely things. All of that helps so much too. Follow me on TikTok. Go and like my recent TikTok with this um, outfit because I need some love. I do. And follow me on Instagram too because you'll see lots of pictures and sometimes teasers of what's to come. So yeah. But other than that, let's get into it. Okay, so in total, the album is one hour and 43 minutes. I don't know how long the first disc is, like uh, time-wise, but I'm imagining half of that. <laughs> Just wanted to mention before we begin, um, we start off terribly because my headphones weren't like connected properly or something, so it made the quality of the song sound terrible. And I listened to the whole song and I was thinking, is this an artistic choice or is this my headphones? I'm going to keep bits of my reaction in. So, you know, just for context and so on for when I actually listen to it with clarity and so on. Because <laughs> it's quite shocking, my reaction. Um, you know, just the difference. Because you'll just see. All right, then. First one is called Somewhat Damaged. Is it meant to be kind of quiet and spooky like that? Is it going to blast my head off any minute now? Okay, <laughs> already made me jump with that. Sounds like it's recorded in like, of something really like, I don't know. You know, it just sounds a bit like muddy and muffled and yeah. The way this is recorded is crazy. It's hard to get my head around the um, quality. I keep thinking, is it recorded like this or is there a problem with my headphones? You know, it's just the uncertainty. If it's meant to be like this, that's pretty fucking cool. But if it's my headphones, that is not cool. I wonder how it was recorded and like what on. It just feels so swallowed up. Obviously very like distorted and bit crashy. Too fucked up to care anymore. It does feel scary to me. Just like the sheer sound of it all makes me feel uncomfortable. Love how it's called somewhat damaged and like the whole recording sounds somewhat damaged. Everything fell apart. Where the fuck were you? It really does feel like the beginning of the end of Downward Spiral. Even saying like my head fell apart. Ooh, nice little transition. Yeah, so is it all going to sound like this? I, I actually feel like I need to listen to another song uh, just to make sure. No, it's not meant to sound like that at all. Oh my God, you got to be kidding me. What? Why has that happened then? Okay, I think I've sorted it. Oh gosh, I was already having a stressful day with everything and then suddenly my audio all screws up, but uh, luckily I did find out. I was thinking like this track is cool, but it's like, it's almost a bit overwhelming how like crappy it sounds. You know what I mean? It was like a stylistic choice is pretty cool, but it was like a little, yeah. I didn't like it really. <laughs> just didn't like it 
So I am going to listen to that whole song again. Um, I will include some of the of me listening to that version just because I thought it's kind of funny actually thinking of me just there like, uh-huh, yeah. Like I was really getting into the beat and everything, but, you know, the sound was odd. But yeah, <laughs> all right, let's do it again and with better quality now. Let's go. Oh, it's already so much better because there's panning that I can actually hear. There wasn't panning before. Yes, that makes so much more sense. Ugh. Phew, I'm so glad I realised, but I hate technical difficulties. I hate difficulties. Oh, yeah, that hits so much better. Wait, what? The clarity. <laughs> this is more like it. Way more like it. What the hell? I was going to say, Trent, you could do better than that. Oh, L has dimension now. Yes! That makes such a difference. Makes it sound so crazy. He sounds back off the side. transition is so good now so the transition before was all of it before was horrible when i hear that now uh, how it actually is meant to sound what i heard before at the time i was going all right i I'm trust the process because obviously i really like what trent has done with the downward spiral and everything like that so i was like, i'm trusting the process maybe he was feeling really terrible that he wanted to make it sound completely terrible <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, I'm so <laughs> glad that I uh, figured it out. Imagine if I listened to the whole album in that way. That would have been actually horrific. I, I <laughs> Okay, yeah. So like I was saying in my first reaction to the terrible audio, I was reading some of the lyrics being like, oh, my head fell apart. Where were you? And all that. Because it really does feel like it is the end of the Downward Spiral, but beginning it again, you know? Because I feel like at the end of Downward Spiral, wasn't it kind of like... The guy had like K-H-S himself, you know? Now it's like he's come back alive and he's furious because he wasn't helped by someone that said that they would help him. That's kind of what it feels like anyway. I know this isn't a concept album or anything, but it feels like that. It really does. Let's have a look. Oh my gosh, the difference. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm not going to go through all the lyrics. I just want to go to the about section. Okay, so I go in the about section and it just seems to be like... These little letters that say stuff like journal entry from the fragile sessions in 1999 detailing the revision of the end of somewhat damaged. But I can't really read it because it's so, well, number one, I haven't got my glasses on, have I? And also it's all very like, it's like some of it's really 
bold and some of it's really faded. I think I'll read that in editing and I'll like put it up in editing as well for you guys to take a look at. But at the moment, I just want to keep going with the music. I feel like I've done way too much thinking today, too much stressful things. I just want to rock out. That song was so good. I loved every motion of it. The chugging. And it would like do it a little bit and then pull back and then throw you in again and then pull back. And yeah, like I said, the lyrics definitely felt like this. Where were you when I needed you most, basically? So already starting off in this very like angry, upset way. Okay, next one is called The Day the World Went Away. And this is the one that we transitioned into and I really liked that transition. Right, let's go. like that 90s feel. Mmm, the strumming of that acoustic in the right ear and just like the soaring drone. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I braced myself. Oh, that was so cool. You know, oddly freeing. Ooh, ooh, gentle, fragile. Well, this song is called The Frail. Right, I'm gonna pause it briefly though. That one was so, yeah, like it was different from the first one. The first one felt like a full proper song, right? And, and minimal lyrics. And I really liked the way it went like very like chill and whatever, and then went into it like ferocious sort of sound, shocking you at first. But when you actually listen to like the chords and then la la, la 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 la, um, it weirdly felt like this ending of something, like an ending of a chapter moving into the next scene sort of feeling. It really did have like an end feeling, if you know what I mean. And, but with a slight bit of freedom. Yeah, it was like a climax, but freedom to it. It wasn't that horrible. Cause obviously it was called like, what, the end of the, uh, what was it called? The day the world went away. And it's like all these, um, well, let's just read the lyrics. I'd listen to the words he'd say, but in his voice, I heard decay. I really liked that lyric when I heard it. Uh, the plastic face forced to betray all the insides left cold and gray. Ooh. There is a place that still remains. It eats the fear. It eats the pain. The sweetest price he'll have to pay the day the whole world went away. Oh, I wonder what that means. So first of all, like I listened to his words, it, it sound like decay. So like this person sounds like death. He had a plastic face like that who was forced to betray. So like this plastic face is probably like this fake smile, but the insides are cold and gray. It sounds like depression a little bit. 
but there is a place that still remains. It eats the fear, it eats the pain. So like, this sounds like a good thing, right? It eats fear, eats pain. That sounds pretty good. But the sweetest price you'll have to pay the day the whole world went away. I wonder what that means. Like the sweetest price you'll have to pay you the whole world went away. So is he talking about death? You know, like to go to a place that eats pain and eats fear, you have to die. Like there's a better place in death. Is he trying to say that? It kind of weirdly feels like that, but I don't really know. Yeah, not sure. But it really does feel like after he says all that, it all goes quiet and whatever. And then we get burst into this freedom feeling. So maybe that is the world completely disappearing and him being dead and it feeling like this more freeing place. Obviously, that does sound quite morbid and dark, but if you ever had have had depression or felt, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, um, or ever felt like you're not wanting to be here on earth anymore, you'll know that these feelings are very common and the thought of dying is actually a very almost relaxing thought. It's like a really nice thought, actually, compared to the world that we live in and the pain that we are feeling on this earthly plane, you know? So, yeah, interesting. But yeah, let's move on. We already went, got 12 seconds in, but I'll start again. The Frail, I think it's just an instrumental. I might let this one go and then go into the next song. Oh, 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 oh. Also, I wanted to say, like... Um, on the downward spiral, some people are like, oh, I would have liked it if you didn't sing along to um, uh, the the last song, um, you know, Hurt. You know, it would have been good if you didn't sing along. And I just thought, fuck off. Actually, fuck off. I'm going to sing to the songs no matter what because I enjoy it. And that's how I listen to music. That's how I enjoy it. You don't have to watch me. I I'm not just going to do what you want. I'm not your fucking lapdog. Okay? So, so if you don't like the singing... Fuck off, okay? It's just the way I like to vibe with it. You know I'm having a good time if I'm singing over it and like singing with it and whatever because that's just that's just how I listen. I don't really don't have to give you my reason, to be honest. But if you don't like it, yeah, piss off because I'm going to carry on doing it. Respectfully. I would like to mention it was probably only a couple people that said that. The way that changed, it just got darker. You know what I mean? It just got darker. It was quite pretty and almost peaceful before, but now it feels like very like doomy. The Wretched. Production is absolutely killer.
gets deeper and darker. But that synth kind of weirdly lifts it. Ah! Oh! You can try and stop it, but back to that sort of the original darkness. <laughs> oh, it's totally horror. It's really sad. Now, you know. Wait, what? What's this? We're in this together. Okay, that's a little bit more of a different statement to what we've been hearing. But yeah, no, before it really gets into it, <laughs> I'm going to look into that one just now because that was oh, 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 so powerful. And the way that little instrumental break just was felt so globular and deep and dark and like, you know, kind of terrifying and then bit crushed and like, it is like oozing tar under like the, you know, streets almost. Like it's like the sewer. Oh my goodness. I really need to look into that one for sure. I feel like they all like from different, some of them from different albums and stuff. Cause every time I go down to the track list, it's a new bloody track list. <laughs> And I'm like, wait, what? So there was the frail and then there was the wretched. So like the frail is like very, you know, obviously frail. And it was like the piano was quite like gentle and pleasant, really. It didn't feel too dark. Yes, maybe a bit somber, but it wasn't too dark. But it transitioned slowly into a darker sound, didn't it? With the synthy sounds too, that then transitioned nicely into the wretched, which was obviously completely dark and completely wretched. So it says here, just a reflection, just a glimpse, just a little reminder of all what, all the whatabouts and all the might have, could have, could have beens. Another day, some other way, but not another reason to continue. And now you're one of us, the wretched, the hopes and prayers, the hopes and praise, the better days, the far aways, forget it. Ooh, it's like he's saying to someone, you're also in this now, like you're part of the depressed crew. Um, and all of your hopes and dreams are gone. And like, that's so true. When going through depression myself, there is no hope. There is just, and there's no point hope, point hoping to have hope because you can't hope at all. And that's just one of the scariest feelings is when you just don't care about the future anymore. And there is literally no hope. You do not ever see yourself getting better. And he is literally just saying, forget it, you know, forget it. He really knows what it feels like. It didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. It didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, did it? I wonder who he is talking to. Maybe he's talking to himself a little bit as well. You know, maybe he's not talking to some random person. Maybe he's literally talking to himself and maybe it's the evil voice you hear when you're depressed telling you, oh, it didn't work out the way you thought it would, did it? You know, Maybe it's that. Now you know this is what it feels like. That's interesting to me because if we are going on a depression uh, thing, many times throughout my life, I felt like I had been depressed until I got depressed. So yes, I'd had depressive depression as a symptom, but it didn't last overly long and wasn't too, too damning. It would last like a couple weeks until I came off opioids and was depressed severely and still, um, you know, climbing out of that depression um, for like a year or so. Um, so like the actual full, like the midst of the depression took one year. And then I slowly, I've been slowly coming out of it over this year. Yeah, saying now you know this is what it feels like. It's like, I remember when I did feel depression thinking stuff like, oh, wow, no, this is genuinely what depression feels like. Now I definitely know what it feels like. I can't believe I ever thought I knew what this felt like before because it didn't even touch the sides. And then this whole bit, the clouds will part, the sky cracks open and God himself will reach his fucking arm through just to push you down, just to hold you down. And yeah, I know that feeling very much so. I lost a lot of my spirituality and faith and whatever in the universe and 
just all of it when depressed. So I wrote a poem. You know, I might put the poem in and you can pause to read if you want to read it. Um, but it was all about how I didn't feel like I had my angels around me and I didn't feel like I even had my demons around me. I felt like I'd been completely discarded to a point where I wasn't even cared about by anything. Nothing was looking over me because I was just, I'd hit my expiration date and actually I was being ignored because I wasn't even meant to be on earth, if you know what I mean. So it's, it can be that dark. And in the end, we still pretend the time we spend not knowing when you're finally free and you could be. So it says here, we don't know when our lives will end, yet we pretend we will know when the time comes. The fact is, when you die, you won't. You won't. When it happens, you are set free from the wretched hellscape. Yeah, exactly. Kind of what I was talking about earlier about dying and whatever and how that can feel like a... You know, I used to, oh my God, this is a very dark video, like trigger warning, I suppose. But I used to have very fantastical fantasies about dying. So like, oh, I probably shouldn't say it. It might just be a bit too much to talk about for YouTube and so on. But I would almost be doing something and I'd see a beautiful view, right? And in that view, I would picture me leaving the world behind in that view. So like if I'm at a forest and I see a beautiful forest, I'd be like, this would be a nice place to die and really picture and fantasize about it. And that would make me feel like a sense of ease and calm because, you know, I hated the world and my life so much that like finding a beautiful place in the world where I could die was, I don't know, it's really dark and sad. There's more to it than that, but yeah. Don't want to get too far because I don't, I don't want to make everyone feel totally shit because <laughs> like the music was banging as well you could try and stop it but it keeps on coming you can try and stop it but yeah all right yeah let's move on we're in this together a bit of a different message like we're in this together it feels like he's been so alone before and now he's saying we're in this together we got this and then like even in the wretched even if he was talking to himself i don't know if he was talking to himself or someone else if he's talking to someone else he's saying welcome you know to the dark side and it's all very horrible. But in this one, he's saying, you know what? We're in this together. Don't worry about it. Like, we're in this together. I don't know. I don't know. That's just a title. But let's hear the song. It might be sarcastic for all I know. Sorry, I just realised what was happening. I was like, hang on. Impending doom? I think I'm going to strip. This is my stripping song, apparently. Whereas vocals are placed. They're so centre stage, a little bit dry, apart from like the distortion and just his natural good distortion in his voice. Oh, the production.
I wonder who he's talking about. Someone he loves, perhaps. You know what, like, even though it's so dark and like, you know, unique, it still has like catchy choruses. Like this has a catchy chorus for sure. Oh. so pretty and it's becoming calm wow you know that was weirdly like a love song <laughs> you know it was actually very sweet ah oh, really really pretty at the end I really like the jaunty sort of like drum patterns in the verses. Oh, another cool transition here. Okay, so this is a title track called The Fragile. I think I'm gonna look into the last one in a minute, but I do just kind of want to go into this one. It's sounding really cool. Okay. So he must be talking about someone he loves. She matters when everything is meaningless. Mm. I can't watch a slip away. I won't let you fall apart. I won't let you fall apart. She reads wow. Is that the chorus? It's kind of a gentle chorus there. He's being fragile. It's like clucking. I love that. Interesting combo of sounds. into it. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it any better than that, really. Another absolute banger. <laughs> yeah, but that one's like a banger, but it's a slow bang. <laughs> oh, whoa. So I'm gonna go to we're in this together first, obviously. So actually this is just what something Trez, Trent Reznor has said uh, in Viva 2 magazine interview. So he said, when I wrote that song, it was one of the last songs for the record. I liked the obviousness of the track, but I was fearful of the obviousness of the track. And in the record that I think is pretty dense, and in a record that I think is pretty dense and somewhat challenging to get through, I didn't want a song that was too obviously the hit single. Well, yeah, actually I was saying about how the chorus did have a catchy sort of feeling. Of all the tracks on that album, I think that was the hardest to arrange a mix because it was mixed poorly. It sounded too obvious in the context of the record. And at this point, we were very aware of the context of the record. So what I learned from the process of doing what was the vocal track I would have thrown out that was out of tune and my voice was breaking up was the one that I needed to use because it added a desperation that made the whole mood of the song feel right. 
right. Good. I'm glad that he did that. I also really wanted to mention um, how, you know, he talked about depression so heavily and deeply and openly. I'm so, so glad that he is here with us today and, you know, didn't let depression win um, in these times that he struggled. I'm so, so very glad. Um, well done and happy, happy for him indeed. Um, but it doesn't really say what the song is about or like who it's about. I'm just going to click the chorus and see what has been said. It just says here, whatever the relationship is between these two people, they feel like they can get through anything together until the very end. It's us versus them. None of them can stop us now. As a callback to a line frequently used in Nine Inch Nails' previous album, The Downward Spiral, nothing can stop me now. However, the context of this line is much more optimistic than in that album, But it, for it depicts the determination of two people to live and pull through insurmountable circumstances rather than a single man who has become set on self-destruction as a result of those circumstances. Absolutely. Don't know who he's referring to, but it's definitely someone he cares about and has is probably going through a similar thing. He uses a, Eva says, you're the queen under king. So let's click that line just in case. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say anything about a particular lover or anything, but or person, but it does mention something to do with David Bowie and his love for David Bowie and um, sort of referencing the song Heroes. But yeah, I don't know who it's about. Oh well, guess I'm not meant to find out. Why every time I click a bloody song it goes to a different album? Like, I'm so confused. It's like, I don't know why it keeps doing that. <laughs> I don't know, but it's just like these songs are on different albums as well. You'll have to let me know about that, guys. It's irritating, to be honest, because it's not making it simple for me. Let's click the fragile. Yeah, you know what? It's kind of annoying because like all the um, about sections are just talking about what the music's doing, which is lovely and all, but I can hear with my own ears what it's doing. But I want to know what the songs are actually about. But then I guess I just click all the lyrics for that, right? But I can't click every lyric because that'll take too long. Um, I'll just read for the lyrics and give my own interpretation. She shines in a world full of ugly... Well, you know, I just feel like he it's about this woman that is shining in a world full of ugliness and he won't let her fall apart. He knows what falling apart feels like, but he's not going to let this woman fall apart. He loves her so much. And saying fragile, she doesn't see her beauty, which is sad. Sometimes it's just that nothing seems worth saying. I can't watch her slip away. So this girl is obviously probably falling also into like the pain maybe going off of the last song we're in this together now him and someone that he loves are both going through depression and it's really really hard to watch her go through it um and he doesn't want to let her fall apart he's telling her i won't let you fall apart which is really 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 sweet actually it's something i have to do i was there too before everything else i was like you so maybe he it feels like he's kind of getting out of the depression in this song and he is helping someone do their depression now. Ah, really interesting. Okay, right. Now we've got Just Like You Imagined. This is filthy.
you could so see how Trent went on to make like scores for like movies and games and so on. At least I think he did. No, he did. <laughs> oh, just crunchy bit crushing. Tickles. That was absolutely blastingly cool. And I really, I really do love instrumental moments, especially when they're just as good as that. It was pretty heavy and I could imagine it in a show. You know how I said earlier about like the second song feeling like almost like this freeing feeling, but it's like an end of a chapter feeling as well. That was similar. It felt like a big interval moment. And I can imagine that on stage being absolutely awesome. I just feel like the energy of the crowd would be insane listening to that. All the textures, so many many textures going on within it and you can hear them all even though there's so much distortion and like crazy huge sounds you can hear the subtleties of different parts coming in da -da 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 -da. that was cool and all the -de -de -de, you know like thin sounds it's just so it like tears you apart it feels like the song is tearing itself apart but in this real like epic aggressive but organized way it's organized chaos for real yeah love that this one's called even deeper oh that's actually the song name's interesting because you know i was saying like the sounds and not the song just now but was it the one before oh, no no it was one a couple before that <laughs> but the one where it was all like globular and dark and sounded like it was in the sewers and it was very deep and it felt like it was getting deeper and deeper and then now this song is called even deeper wow okay That's so nice. Oh, the symbol. Oh, he's so good with like adding different, all the different textures. Yeah, just, 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 sorry, just before it goes. You know, he, he's so good at having like, like you know, like the deeper texture, which is the, the kick. And then you've got the symbols which are, which are up here. And then we've got that other sound coming in there, like as a very middle sound. He's so good with it, not just like using like pitches and so on of different instruments, but the EQ of it just to make it all fit nicely. Yeah, oh, see? We've got that like bass, like synthy bass that is a bit growly. Oh, sorry, sorry, but like the synthy bass is a bit growly against the original kick drum sort of subby boom. But then the other bass is like brum. So it's like two textures against each other, even though they're both deeper sounds, but you can hear them, you can define them, you know, you can, you can set them apart and know what they are. They don't sound muddy or like mixed together. It's just, oh, it's so impressive. a little deranged. It's got 
like a real trip poppy element. Oh, he's whispering to me. That is so good. Oh, before we move on, which I think is going to be another instrumental. But that was ugh, Slink Central. That was so slinky, dark and sexy. It was definitely giving me a bit of trip hop, like I said, a bit of a portis head, a bit of um, 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 come on, come on, come on. Massive Attack? I think it was Massive Attack. Um, <laughs> but then also a bit of like more modern, you know, Seb Deliza. Um, Seb Deliza with the string parts, you know, really reminds me of Seb Deliza, but obviously I should technically say Seb Deliza reminds me of Nine Inch Nails. Oh my God, I just felt, I, I had to be a serpent. I just had to be a serpent, you know? I was serpenting. You can't really see my hips or anything, so you can only see the top of me, so you can't really see how serpenty I was being, really. Basically, my whole bottom half turned into a snake, but you can't see it, but it was a snake. All those sounds I just am really into. It does something to me that feels nostalgic, and I don't mean it's just because this was made in the 90s. I mean, like, to me, it feels nostalgic. It's a nostalgic... I don't know, feeling. Maybe it is the feeling of the 90s though. Like the movies I watched from the 90s. I, I was only, I was born in 95, but the 90s still had a huge effect on me, um, especially because my sister was born in 87. So she showed me lots of things from the 90s as I was growing up. Yeah, I don't know, it was just like, it just has like this feeling. I could picture a music video to it, absolutely. And then, you know, the music video looked very black and red and dark, which is kind of cool because I've got the red glasses on here, but you know, like it almost like a strip club. Yeah, I could see like a strip club with like people pole dancing and like red light and it's all very slow and sensual. Interesting. I wonder if I got that image from somewhere. I don't know, but that's definitely what I was seeing. I like when he said, sometimes I have everything, yet I wish I felt something. I really felt that. Cause like, yeah, like I have everything around me that I could ever want, but I don't feel. It doesn't really mean anything to me. And then, do you know how far this has gone? Just how damaged I've become. When I think I can overcome, it runs even deeper. And in a dream, I'm a different me with a perfect you. We fit perfectly. And for once in my life, I feel complete. And I still want to ruin it. Afraid to look as clear as day. This plan has long been underway. I hear them call, I cannot say. The voice inviting me away. Do you know how far this has gone? Just how damaged I've become? When I think I can overcome, it runs even deeper. Everything that matters is gone. And he really is getting deeper, deeper throughout each moment, he says it. All the hands of hope have withdrawn. Oh. Could you try to help me hang on? It runs, I'm straight, I won't crack. I'm on, on my way and I can't turn back. I'm okay, I'm on track, on my way. And I can't turn back, I stayed on this track. Gone too far and I can't go back. I stayed on this track, lost my way, can't go back. And he repeats that and it's the, it doesn't get deeper but he's lost his track and he can't come back. He like Every time he thinks he might be getting better, he gets worse. Or every time he thinks there's something that could help, it doesn't help and then it gets worse and worse again. So it's just like these constant getting deeper and deeper into the depression. Oh, I know what that feels like. <laughs> oh, yeah. And like, it's crazy because like the song suits it, but it's also so sensual. I guess it is a very intimate sort of feeling because it's just you and that part of you, this sort of depression demon that is like living within you. It's almost romantic because of how much you're together, your souls are entwined and it's telling you nasty things, you're bickering with it too. You're saying no, but sometimes you succumb to it. Yeah, it's, it's like a dark lover that you wanna get away from, but it is something kind of, it is a definitely an intimate experience. It's not an experience you can share with anyone else because everyone's depression is slightly different. Yes, we all get the same symptoms in a lot of ways, but like the what the voice says in your head, the evil things that you're being told is from your own self-esteem, from your own like life, your own traumas and so on. But anyway, let's move on. So this one is called Pilgrimage. 
Maybe it's a pilgrimage of him trying to get out of how deep he has gone into the depression. Maybe. a movie or something. really is like a marching sort of soldier military thing i don't know <laughs> oh i'm gonna let it go into this one this one's called no you don't pilgrimage was fucking terrifying honestly but cool tense and it amounted into a big thing and then kind of dropped into this oh we're rising again no you don't okay i don't okay Siren. Feels like we've been abducted. It's like, Ooh. I did not believe that you could sing so low. Think that you can be down. I know that you are. You think you have everything. the gym tomorrow i'm gonna to be too tired to go that was so good i really like that they've all been brilliant i actually think honestly being completely fucking honest with you i may like this one more than a downward spiral every sound has just been even more i don't know like well done and amazing and, and maybe just more up my street or something i absolutely love this so far and we still got more songs to go on this on this disc, and we got a whole other disc to go. I think in the second disc, I'm gonna have to sit down. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sit down for the second disc. It's so ferocious. No, you don't. <laughs> I love it. What the hell?
smiling in their faces or filling up the hole. So many dirty places in your filthy little worn out, broken down, see-through soul. I love how he fits all of that in and it fits in perfectly. It's so good. Baby's got a problem, tries so hard to hide. Got to keep it on the surface because everything else is dead on the other side. Teeth in the necks of everyone you know, you can keep on sucking till the blood won't flow. When it starts to hurt, it only helps it grow. Taking all you need, but not this time. No, you don't. And he really is saying it like that. No, you don't. <laughs> Like a parent, don't do that. No, you don't. He's telling, he's telling them all. Just for the record, just so you know, I did not believe that you could sink so low. You think that you could beat them? I know that you won't. You think you have everything, but no, you don't. I'd love to know who that's about. I would love to know, but I feel like I never get to know these things. But he's talking about them again, you know? Like them versus us. Who's them? Is it just the people that are creating the pain for him the people that are making this world not a great place is it the government of in some way the music industry maybe or i don't know just i don't know i, don't, I really don't bloody know it's all speculation someone has commented this i find this breakthrough song is about addicted psychic vampires caring about what they can pump into their veins teeth being needle needles on the necks of all you know, and shows his turning the table of the junkies. Ooh, that's very interesting. So really, it could be about addiction. And I forgot that obviously Cass did mention it. It's not just about depression, it's also about addiction. And them two go very, very, very hand in hand. Well, like I already mentioned in this video, I was addicted to opioids and that is how I got my huge depression when I when I um, came off them. So yeah, it could definitely be about needles and drugs and stuff like that yeah anyway i'm not gonna give myself a headache over it let's move on to la mer let's go oh and it is in french i'm boiling after all that jumping around Trent. <laughs> so the lines are spoken in Creole French by French actress Denise Milford, Milfor, whispering below this supposed instrumental. Creole French in Africa. I'm gonna have to look that up. I feel like I've heard of it because I watched this guy that knows, that learns those languages. Yeah, okay. Originating from the mix of French, Indian, and African cultures. Yay, I was right. Yeah, that was an interesting one. That one definitely just felt like a, again, like an interval moving into a new space, sort of like it had that ever rising sort of feeling, definitely interval feelings. Um, yeah, I liked it. It was cool. Um, not too much to say about it, though. The next one is called The Great Below. Okay, this is the last one on disc one. Sorry, just checked. Also, I've noticed I've had my mic up here at some points. I've had it down here most of the time. But yeah, I've been all over the place with it. I do apologise. <laughs> I don't think it really makes a difference, but hey. It just sounds a bit nicer when it's up here. You hear more of my beautiful voice. 
the great below deep again, you know, even deeper. nice singing to like Nine Inch Nails songs. It's like a great range for me. It's just, it's smooth. It's, it's a smooth experience. There's a harmony now. Yeah. I really like that harmony. It feels like almost tinny. What a brilliant song to end a disc. Wow. And it really did feel like you're out at sea in the night time, looking down and almost falling down, down, down into the darker depths of the ocean. Wow. Okay. It says, staring at the sea, will she come? Is there hope for me? After all that's said and done, anything at any price, all of this for you, all the spoils of a wasted life, all of this for you, all the world has chosen her eyes. Tired faith, all worn and thin, for all we could have done, and all that could have been. Ocean pulls me close and whispers in my ear, the destiny I've chose, all becoming clear. The currents have their say, the time is drawing near, washes me away, makes me disappear, and as I descend from grace, I'm in the arms of the undertow, I will take my place, in the great below. I can still feel you, even so far away. So, I don't know who he's talking about with, at the start there, you know, will she come? Maybe it kind of goes back to like the first song of this disc where it's like you said you were going to be there for me but you weren't and now it's saying he's at this sort of place again where he wants to pass away and you know deep into the bottom of the ocean and he's wondering will she come this time this time will she come but it's too late I think because he actually does do what he wants to do but he could still feel he says I can still feel you even so far away even so far away Oh, so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Even though it's so dark, it is so bloody beautiful. So I click on staring at the sea, will she come? It says here, he stares into distance, wondering and questioning his past and current life choices. Does he still have a chance to redeem and save himself? Hmm. Or maybe she means 
the sea like will she come will the under will the big wave like the will the current come and to pull me away i don't know all the world has closed her eyes all the world has closed her eyes but it says here the protagonist laments the way this significant other was treated by both him and the world oh he wishes to have done more before it was too late oh so maybe he's saying like the one that he saying that he will always look after and like not let her fall apart maybe he has actually treated her badly ocean pulls me close with whispers in my ear he finally realizes and comes to terms with the fact that no one but him and anything to do with his emotional suffering oh, wait, sorry no one but him had anything to do with his emotional suffering and that only once he accepts the consequence of his choices he will be able to start the path to redemption the currents up there say the time is drawing near Life moves on and he must decide whether he wants to remain stuck in a cycle of pain or gather the strength to recover before his time to still make a choice runs out. I don't know. I, like, yeah, yeah. But I feel like he's saying, well, the destiny I've chose is all becoming clear. But then also the currents have their say and the time's drawing near. Because like, the current's so strong, it's starting to have their say. It's not all down to choice if he's in the middle of the ocean and the currents are coming, you know? So if he wants to make a choice, he has to make it quick before he gets washed away and it disappears. And I descend from grace in the arms of the undertow, I will take my place in the great below. The previous lines and ocean motif imply that the, this major phase of his life slash self is so ruined that all he could do is accept the end. Yes. I can still feel you even so far away. This motif concludes the character arc of the left disc in The Fragile. Despite him moving on, he still laments the loss of his significant other and likes to remember their happy times together. That's what I thought as well. Like, it feels like he's talking about his lover and I wonder if it was the same person that he was addressing in the first song, because that would be very interesting if it was. Disc one, amazing. So I'm going to stop for now because I've got to make dinner, but I'm going to come back after dinner and do the second disc. But I'm going to be seated because I'm starting to super ache, super ache. I've actually been stood on my feet for two hours. Um, so yeah, makes sense that I'm aching. But yeah, cool. <laughs> See you in a minute. Okay, I'm back and I am sat down. I have had my dinner and am ready to keep going. I was actually thinking when I was having my dinner how disc one was all very morbid. Yes, there was some love in it too with a certain somebody, um, but it was mainly morbid, very much about depression and not really wanting to be here anymore and feeling such disdain for the world. So I do wonder if disc two will follow the exact same theme Will it, and like, get worse or stay the same or, or, yeah, or if it'll be about some other things as well. I'm not sure. I don't really mind. I was just curious, but don't have to be curious for any longer because I'm going to keep going. The next song is called The Way Out Is Through and it is number one. And that weirdly sounds, well, hopeful. Because I will say that when my depression, one of the quotes that kept me going was, if you're going through hell, keep going. And you think there should be like a keep going because. It just is, if you're going through hell, keep going. I listen to it like a mantra and like a direction. You're going through hell, but just keep going. Just keep going. I'm not going to tell you why, just keep going. Like, And I was just listening to that instruction. And then you realise what that means when you come out of it and you realize keep going because it will get better and the quote doesn't say because you know you'll get better because within depression you don't feel a lot of hope so it'd be hard to believe so just by saying keep going you hear it as an instruction so you do then you find out why and when when the hope starts to come back because i found when i was coming out of my depression the first thing I realised was that my hope was coming back. So the songs on here about leave your hope behind, forget about it, is interesting because, I don't know, I guess that's a universal feeling with depression, is you lose hope and when you start to feel hope, you realise you are coming out of it. I don't know, hopefully that all made sense. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's do it. The way out is through. Scrapey sounds. <laughs> Go. 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 
It's like a snarling sound. His voice is creeping up. just go through <laughs> what just happened to me <sighs> that was quite the fucking experience there guys transition I was actually lost in thought like thinking about that song and then that transition grabbed me oh this is called into the void and it's sounding really really creepy I also would like to admit that I did partake in a mm, cigarette so yes this is hitting even more I think well I don't know like I feel like that song just now like even if I hadn't had that cigarette would have done that exact same thing to me. Something about it was absolutely, well, freaking powerful. <laughs> it was so powerful. And he's saying, I will keep on. So it's like, he's actually not died at the end of disc one. He's rising. So he's rising from the bottom of the ocean, which is very interesting. But then this one's called Into the Void, which makes you think maybe not. Let's hear it. Well, I'll, I'll carry on from a little bit just before where are we? yeah six seconds all right let's go it's very um happy <laughs> but a little bit strange you know Ugh, it's absolutely beating me up I was like... Ooh, he's talking! Ooh, he's on this side now! St. Vincent. So St. Vincent reminds you of Nine Inch Nails. They really are the fucking pioneers of so much experimental rock music.
myself keep slipping away. Okay, something is up with this too. Right, some... I was wondering in curiosity, I was thinking, is it going to be different on the second disc? I wonder, I wonder. Do I really mind? No, no, I don't mind. But I'm just wondering. Uh, No one told me it was going to slap me, beat me, claw me, bite me, absolutely shake up my whole world. Like, that's actually a bit freaking crazy. The and 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 this is the and this is the side of the disc that I chose to sit down for. I bet you're all laughing. <laughs> I bet you're all thinking, "Oh, this idiot." <laughs> well, at least you know I haven't heard the albums before. You know what I mean. And I'm not saying it's going to carry on this vibe throughout the whole of this disc. But those two songs slapped harder than any of the other ones on the other disc even though the one that was quite metal on the other disc I really enjoyed and there was slinky ones of course I know I'm only like two songs in but you know just hear me out on the other disc obviously there's like slinky ones and word dancing ones as well yes actually was a couple but not like this this is giving me Gary Newman just like I said in Downward Spiral come to find out that they're actually friends and have done stuff together or whatever um, or I don't know if they've made music ever. I can't remember what you guys said. I, I actually, I feel like I need to like hear that really. Um, if they have done anything together, that would be cool. But um, I know that they're friends though, or or Trent really liked Gary Newman's music. Whatever it was, whatever. But anyway, it's just really cool hearing that Gary Newman style with the industrial rock sound as well. Oh, it's just so good. It just makes me want to. I don't know, move and party all night long. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, and from the way that one started, it uh, I, <laughs> I wasn't expecting the change up. You know what I mean? But it started like... Like, what in the who now? Weird, circusy creepy kid show was that that was crazy but um <laughs> yeah all the things he was saying were interesting just the whole like try to save myself but no try what do you say <laughs> yeah try to save myself but myself keeps slipping away like he's trying to help himself he's trying to get better but you know he keeps slipping away he just can't do it he can't bring himself to be better or happy or even if it's about addiction too maybe he's trying to save himself but myself keeps slipping away like mixing addiction with the depression saying i'm trying to like you know stop being addicted to this thing but i'm so depressed that i can't even really do much it all ties together but you know him trying to save himself is is oddly hopeful though but like he's not trying not to save himself well, you know what I mean? He's not not trying to save himself. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Means the same thing. But yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that one was a single or anything. Because it really did have... I don't know. It felt like it could have been. But anyway, next one is called Where Is Everybody? Oh, yeah. And like, I know I did already mention like St. Vincent and stuff. But like, you could just so hear Nine Inch Nails. Uh influence in St. Vincent. I might have even said that in a St. Vincent uh, reaction before, but um, no, you can really hear it. I love it. And I love that they created this. And also, doesn't it sound like this album could have been made today? Like it's absolutely pristine when it comes to production and a lot of stuff in the 90s or um 2000 well mainly like 2000s pop for some reason became unbelievably compressed and it had like no dynamic i don't really know why but like when you hear this it's just got so much dynamic and width and like length and space and oh yeah it's just got so many dimensions right anyway <laughs> Peppers. 
just bounces back at you. I just feel like everyone needs to fucking hear this. Okay, enough. You've had your fun, but come on, there has got to be someone to succumb. And God damn, I am so tired of pretending. Pushing I was ending when all I'm really doing is trying to hide. Bleeding and bleeding and breathing. Feeding, exceeding. Where is everybody? I absolutely love him just rhyming the same rhyme. Oh my God, he's so going for it. He's putting so much like raw expression from his vocal in this. Even explain what I saw when that came in. Well, I can, but not very well. I'm going to anyway. This is creepy. Oh, interesting. Sorry, just getting the sleep out of my eye. I hate it because, like, when you wear eyeliner, it all like gathers up into the corner of your eye. If you wear eyeliner, then you'll know. <laughs> but, um, wow. <laughs> Just wow. What? Like, what? <laughs> wow. Well, I don't know what else to say. It's just too freaking good. <sighs> no, what? <laughs> I, I can't. It was just absolutely so crazy. And oh yeah, yeah, I was going to explain what I saw. So, you know, it was just doing the same thing again and again, but not in a bad way. I normally hate things that repeat far too much, but it was just too aggressive and like powerful. Like the whole song had reached that moment. And then you're just hearing that and it's like a trance, like a really intense... <laughs> crazy rocking trance you know what I mean um and then when it came in with the I literally I was almost scared like when I closed my eyes because you know I've got synesthesia if you didn't know I've got synesthesia that's where I see colors and shapes and images in music so um it felt like sorry <laughs> that's really hard to yeah <laughs> Okay, so it felt like as soon as I came in, I could see a big train coming through a tunnel, um, like in the underground. So it was coming through a tunnel, so it was like light behind the train. And it was just like going like this towards me. And that's why I went like that at first. I think I did anyway. I remember feeling like I was bracing myself because I could see it so vividly. It was coming towards me. And then as it got towards me, it like it didn't split in half. It's like the middle part went invisible and you can still see the sides of the train, but they're going past me and through me. And then suddenly all I see is like this green, like arch, like an archway of the tunnel, but it's all green with this like tree of like life or something, just a tree. It might not be a tree of life, but when I think of it, like it, how it meant so much, it felt like it. And it was very green and it was like bending out like this. And yeah, and then I just felt like I was moving towards that. And it was really interesting and really cool. But um, yeah, let's have a look at those lyrics. Did you happen to catch or did it happen so fast? What you thought would always last. He, pa he has passed you by, sorry. Oh, sorry. I got like a pain in my shoulder blade that went right into my heart. 
no, don't worry, I'm just having a heart attack. <laughs> so it felt like for a minute there. Well, not really, I don't know what that feels like. Anyway, <laughs> let's try that again. Did you happen to catch or did it happen so fast? What you thought would always last has passed you by. Is everything speeding up or am I slowing down? Oh, that's interesting with the image I got. The speeding of the train and then like the the hopeful tree at the end that was slowly coming towards me or I was going towards it. Just spinning around and I don't know why, all the pieces don't fit. Thought I really didn't give a shit. I never wanted to be like you, but for all I aspire, I am really a liar and I'm running out of things I can do. I'd like to stay, but every day everything pushes me further away. If you could show, help me to know how it's supposed to be, where did it go? Like, did you happen to catch or did it happen so fast? What you thought would always last has passed you by. Like in my head, that feels like, the depression he thought would last, but it passed them by. But maybe I think he's talking to someone else who had come out of a depression or a bad place. And he's like, oh, wow, did it happen fast? Or did you just manage to catch a slice of hope? Like what you thought would always last? It's just passed you by? And then he's like, is everything speeding up or am I slowing down just spinning around? And I don't know why. Like he feels like he's like, he can't get it. He doesn't get it. He's like, well, how did you get out of it? Because I'd love to know. I'm spinning around. I'm doing all sorts. All the pieces don't fit. Thought I really didn't give a shit. I never wanted to be like you, but for all I aspire, I really am a liar. I don't know what that means. Like maybe he's saying like, oh, because you're, it, you became, maybe he's talking to someone saying like, you became ignorant to the pain in the world and that's how you're happy now, but... I don't want to be like that, but really I'm just lying. I, I kind of do want to be like that. I don't want to feel this pain. I don't know. I'm going really on a strange one here. I'm running out of things I could do. I'd like to stay, but every day if it pushes me further away, yes. If you could show, help me to know how it's supposed to go, where did it go? Yeah, being like, you know, can you help me get out of this pain, basically? Show me where my happiness went. I don't know. Like I said, I really am making shit up here. <laughs> pleading and needing and bleeding, breeding, feeding, exceeding. Where is everybody? So interesting because that sounds like he's describing people, you know. That is like needing, bleeding, breeding, feeding. We are all, all people do all these things. So it's like, and then he's like, where is everybody? Maybe he feels alone. Trying and lying, defying, denying, crying and dying. Where is everybody? Yeah, it's quite cryptic, really. Well, okay, enough. You've had your fun, but come on, there has got to be someone that hasn't yet become so numb and succumb. And goddamn, I'm so tired of pretending, of wishing I was ending. Oh, I really, really, really like that line. I'm so tired of pretending, of wishing I was ending. Pretending of wishing I was ending. Oh my gosh, it's just got so many layers. It's almost like him wishing that he was ending is actually all pretend because he doesn't really want to want to end he just wants to be happy pretty much like what i said in a downward spiral at some point when all i'm really doing is trying to hide and keep inside and fill it with lies open my eyes maybe i wish i could try pleading and needing oh it's like maybe i wish i could try pleading and needing and all these things instead of being so numb i wish i could do all these things <laughs> maybe i don't know what do you guys think you'll have to let me know but I love it. Anyway, let's do this one. The mark has been made. Oh my gosh. We've got another slinky one. So far, the guitar kind of reminds you of the doors a little bit. This is the end.
of the words mixed up. I don't know why it keeps reminding me of the end from the doors. for like being shot oh and this song's called the mark has been made like the mark of the devil the beast you know like you're a target now no matter how far you try and get away from it it catches up with you That was awesome, by the way. Loved it. <laughs> also, I realized like when I'm reacting to these songs, I've, I've my face, like I've not made one pretty face throughout these songs. I, they're just so, I'm like contorted, just as, uncon as contorted as the music. What is this? I'm getting closer. I'm gonna da 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 da, well get me closer to God. Please, that's the song name. This is how oh, begins. I like that. All comes back again. Oh, all the flesh. All soon. Sounds scary. There was a time when it used to mean just about everything. Mm. This one is super disorientating. I like the way you said it like that. What the hell? This is such a different sound, actually. These bits. That one was like really interesting. Yeah, so not as much as like a one that I was like dancing to like the other ones, but like because it was so like strange, but in a good way. And like the chorusy bit, like what I would assume is the chorus, had like this really interesting sound that didn't quite sound like Nine Inch Nails. It almost sounded like another like maybe pop punky band or even a bit new metally or like a bit more mainstream in the melody which i found really interesting because the song was so experimental and strange it was like a weird blend i liked that let's have a look at it it almost to me just reading through the lyrics there sounds like he's talking about a drug because you know, he says, this is how it begins, push it away, but it all comes back again. All the flesh, all the sin, there was a time when it used to mean just about everything, just like now. This is how it begins, push it away, but it comes back again, maybe like the addiction. All the flesh, all the sin, there was a time when it used to mean just about everything. It meant stuff when he was sober, right? So before he got high, it all meant everything. But he's saying just like now, breath echoing the sound almost sounds like he's on drugs or whatever. It's like breathing even echoes. Time starts slowing down, sink until I drown. It's almost like he's falling into like a peaceful state. I don't ever want to make it stop. So he's like really obviously enjoying himself. And it keeps repeating 
will you please complete me? You take the drug and it does make you feel complete. It makes you feel very calm and closer to God, I suppose. And, you know, you're high, literally. So never be enough to fill me up, though. You know, it, it never will be enough because, like, the more you take, the more you need. And then you it keeps going until you die. Watch the white turn to red. It fills up the hole. Ooh, watch the white turn to red. You can almost, like, picture it being, like, I don't know, like a syringe? maybe I don't know the blood I don't know it fills up the hole but it grows somewhere else instead oh my oh that's interesting that's that's cool it fills up the hole inside me but it grows somewhere else instead all my life yeah 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 but it just left me dead well guess what the world is over and I realized it was all in my head now everything is clear I erase the fear I could disappear please I just don't want to make it stop so like when he's in these states he's like I can see everything clear now. I I have no fear. I understand everything. I just, I want to be like this forever. I can disappear. Yeah, he's just feeling it, you know? Wow. That's what I believe it to be about when I read the lyrics. Because, yeah, that's the way I understood it. But anyway, next. Okay, this one's called Starfuckers Inc. Interesting. Okay, let's go. Ugh. My God's assistant, the back of the limousine. A cellophane. My God, the house on the cover of the magazines. I have arrived in this time, you should believe the hype. I'll be there for you. Punk. Whoa! Felt like he got sucked in and spat out. I wonder, like, if he's talking about anyone in particular, you know? Or is it just in general? Wow. Again, that, like, Starfuckers moment has a different feel to it than the uh, other songs. This whole album has been so different from the first one. Uh, first disc. And first album. Well, no, there's mixes. Yes, I love that, the reference. This one going complication.
sometimes you just gotta shake your head. <laughs> you just gotta shake your head. You gotta bang it out. Hang on, right. You know, head banging out. I was lost in the sauce. Whoa. Ooh, distressed strings. Oh! Holy, holy, holy moly. Wow, we, this fucking disc is insanity. Oh, that is, oh, wow. What is going on with this freaking disc? I mean, the first disc, listen, this isn't me. I know I'm very excitable about this one, but this isn't to say that the first disc wasn't as good as this. It's just a complete different feeling, even though we are still getting these dark themes in the lyrics, but the sound is genuinely so different. The first one had, I, I, I don't, actually know how to describe it. It's just like, I don't know, the first one felt more pained in a darker, morbid way. Whereas this one's like angry, uh, passionate, destructive, you know, it's very intense and I love it. But then the first one was just like, intense too but it, oh my god I just can't wait to listen to it both again because now listening to this I'm trying to think of what the first one sounded like and it's actually kind of like hard to no I, I can remember but it's I need to hear them both again which I will obviously be doing in editing so I just wow this, this is amazing I just want to be able to hear these again and again and again and I will like hopefully I say hopefully because obviously I listen to so many albums I barely get a chance to listen to an album when I'm not working. I still do, but it's not as, it's a bit more rare than you'd think because I just listen to so much music all the time and then obviously editing, I'm hearing songs all the time. But the good thing is though, when I edit, obviously I don't just hear the songs once again. I hear them, it's like I get to know them, like really get to know them when I'm editing. Yeah, that was bloody good. But also, um, the Starfuckers one, interesting. It's like, what, what is it about? Like, well, yeah, I kind of got the idea of what it's about, but what, what is this disdain? Well, yeah, obviously I do understand what a disdain might be, but like, it feel, it felt personal is what I'm trying to say. That's why I said, is he talking about a certain person? Cause like, it weirdly felt personal. Like he felt so angry and like a lot of hatred towards these types of people. So yeah, it literally just makes me wonder why so much. I don't need to keep going around in circles. Okay, this song deals with the self-involved vanity and shallow commercialization of fame, specifically directed towards celebrities such as Marilyn Manson, who Reznor was publicly feuding with at the time, Billy Corgan, David Lee Roth. That's interesting he said David Lee Roth because there was moments... And like, on a, just, you know, just hear me out. I actually weirdly thought of like, um, wait, who is David Lee Roth again? I might be getting him wrong. Yeah, 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 I am right. Um, he's the lead singer of Van Halen. And for some weird reason, I, I felt like the song actually reminded me of a bit of Van Halen and certain points or like Motley Crue or that vibe but yeah it was like giving me Van Halen maybe they did that on purpose because why would I have randomly thought them I didn't say anything because I was like you know not everyone's into like that sort of music and maybe it would have been offensive to say it reminded me of them <laughs> I don't know why it would have because like none of that other songs reminded me of Van Halen if you know what I mean um, so he kind of has a disdain for them. But anyway, directed towards Sophie such as Marilyn Manson, yeah, Billy Corgan, David Lee Roth, and Courtney Love. The edited version was called Starfuckers Inc., which was also the name of the video of the uh, name that the video was released as. Sorry. Okay, cool. Oh, there's a music video. I might have to um for the Patreon do the music videos, but I'll probably do that in a separate video. Maybe I need to dedicate a day where I actually do like react to music videos that I said I've said I would react to or something. Yeah, maybe I should do that. I, I'll write a post at one point and say, remind me of the videos I meant to react to. And yeah, I'll do that for the Patreon. Just because like, if I do at the end of this one, it would have been a very long day of filming for me. Talking to the patrons here. <laughs> okay. It feels like he just feels like someone who is very real and authentic and, and he doesn't really like things that aren't that way, understandably, especially if but he's in the same industry as these other people. He's like, guys come on now, like, just be normal. <laughs> just
just be real, authentic. The commercialization of all of this is kind of cringy. It's like a sellout sort of vibe. Anyway, let's go. This one's called, I'm looking forward to joining you finally. Oh, okay. I've got like a little hair somewhere I can feel. Wow. I like how the music matches the words. That's sad. The smell of sunshine I remember sometimes. Wow. Wow. It makes me sad, that line. Yeah. really nice you know it's a little bit more chill but it's still got that drum that just keeps you there and it's just oh and the bass line too and the vote all of it this is a great song i really liked this kind of like i was just like really in it <laughs> in a trance again wow so it says, as black as the night can get, everything is safer now. There's always a way to forget once you learn to find a way how. In the blur of serenity, where did everything get lost? The flowers of naivety buried in a layer of frost. Oh. The flowers of naivety buried in a layer of frost. Sounds so sad, doesn't it? But then the smell of sunshine I remember sometimes. Now, even though I'm cold and numb, I still sometimes remember, ever so slightly, I remember that feeling of happiness. Uh, it just makes me sad, that line, because I know that feeling too when you're really depressed and like it's been days and days and days, weeks and weeks and weeks of just the same low feeling. Um, you'll remember like a, you'll have like a memory of like a nice feeling and you'll be like, oh, hello. And then it will slowly slip away. That's what I read it like. Thought he had it all before they called his bluff. Found out that his skin just wasn't thick enough. Wanted to go back to how it was before. Thought he lost everything. Then he lost a whole lot more. A fool's devotion swallowed up in empty space. The tears of regret frozen to the side of his face. The smell of sunshine I remember sometimes. I've done all I can do. Can I come? Please come with you now. Sweet smell of sunshine I remember sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, saying stuff like the fool and like the devotion swallowed up in an empty place. Wow, that's interesting. Found his skin, it wasn't thick enough. He's talking about like the, the sort of, again, like, fragility i suppose of like oh, a young man or a teenage uh or a guy like not knowing how painful the world is and him realizing as he ages how bad it is and becomes frozen and cold just like the rest of every adult i don't know maybe something like that anyway let's move on all right this one is called the big come down Ooh. Oh, the atonal sort of 
weird ass notes, combinations of notes. Sounds scary. The synth, really nice. That's so pretty. music does that like completely shocks me and that just happens so much throughout this album these both discs <laughs> like it really takes me back so alien Ooh, those strings like being plucked I didn't feel like it was like gonna do that. <laughs> like it really just did that to me again. Where I just lose myself. Oh, because it was already good. I was just listening and like enjoying, but then it and then it just gets great. Well, yeah. Well, I wasn't God, it's like a blur. It's such a feeling thing, you know? Like when the music takes over, it all just goes in such a blur, and it's like because you're so in the moment. <laughs> Lyrically, the big come down. There is a game I play, try to make myself okay. Try so hard to make the pieces all fit. Smash it apart just for the fuck of it. So yeah, it's like the Mr. Self-Destruct again a little bit, you know? There's a game I play, I try and make myself okay, but then I go and ruin it all. I self-destruct. Bye bye. Ooh, whatever he did. Gotta get back to the bottom, bye bye. The big come down isn't what you wanted. Find a place with the failed and the forgotten. Isn't that really what you wanted now? There is no place I can go. There is no place I can hide. It feels like it keeps coming from the inside. Well, yeah, it is. That's interesting, the self-destruction. There is a hate that burns within. The most desperate place I've ever been. Try to get back to where I'm from. The closer I get, the worse it becomes. The closer I get, the worse it becomes. There is no place I can go. There is no place I can hide. It feels like it keeps coming from the inside. In a way, it's almost like saying he doesn't like the outside and he doesn't like the inside. There's no place he can go because it's just all, all of it is horrible. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I do that at the end of every like lyrical reading. I'm like, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Cause I don't know. I just, I'm going off what I feel. This one's called Underneath It All. <laughs> wow! He sounds so scary. <laughs> it feels like he's talking to, you know, the destructive side of him.
it's so scary. You remain, I am stained. Okay, so that one weirdly feels like, yeah, he's talking to the shadow. Okay, so when, yeah, when I was depressed, yeah, it's like this creepy dark being that is you, but it's not you. It's like a shadow version of yourself, but it's it's always attached to you. Like, it's not like it's in the room outwardly. It's like they're on you, like they're next to you side by side. At all times, it's always here. A bit, I guess, like the devil on your ear, but no angel, just devil. And it really is like a shadow, like looming and saying horrible things. And he's talked a lot about feeling numb and, you know, having everything but not being able to feel it and, you know, not caring about any all of it. Um, but he's saying, but all I do, I still feel you. Like, even though I feel, when I feel numb, I still feel you. And like, even all, all I do to try and make myself better, I still feel you. Any happiness in my life around me, I just still feel you there. This darkness. It's kind of what he's saying, I believe, unless it's about a real person. Oh yeah, and if any of you haven't seen my videos before and you're wondering why I'm sat in a camp chair, you might not have wondered the whole video, but just in case you were wondering, you can't really see it when I'm up here, to be fair. But yeah, it's because I have like chronic pain and like back issues and so on. And weirdly, these camp chairs are the comfier seats. <laughs> they are just the most comfy for my back. That's why I use them. Have you seen me complain about my back? Well, I might have said one thing about the the back of my shoulder blade going into my heart, having a heart attack. But forget, that, that was just one time. And you know, my back does hurt, but it's just not as bad. Anyway, let's move on to ripe with decay. Scary. Let's go. Again, it feels like the doors. It's really weird, though. Dissonant. Gorgeous. with decay. Let's not forget that this is what this is called. Ugh. Creepy, I got an actual shiver up my spine. Feels like insects absolutely everywhere. This living room is already a spider farm. <laughs> there are literally spiders in every corner. Multiple. Like, I, I can't actually believe I'm sat in here right now. There's probably about eight spiders. Visibly. <laughs> It'd be the perfect time for one to creep down on its web and sit down beside me. <laughs> oh, it's a little crane fly thing. <laughs> <laughs> the timing! <laughs> Stop it! I don't like it! Ugh, so freaky!
Ooh. That's cool. Okay. Okay, big boy. Big Daddy base. <laughs> wow, it's like running. I don't know, it's like yeah it reminds me of like being downstairs and hearing like a ghost running along the floorboards but obviously it's like repetitive as well so it's like i don't know weird trippy Okay, that was crazy. Wait, that was a... You're fucking kidding me. I didn't even notice. That was the last song of the second disc. Oh shit, I didn't even bloody notice. How did I not notice? Well, I didn't look. I didn't really think about it. Wait, that was the last song. That makes me kind of sad. I want more. <laughs> no, I genuinely... I felt like that wasn't as long as the first one. It was so good though. Like, why? I don't know why I'm complaining. I literally just sat through... And now, like, in total, I've done about three and a half hours of filming today, basically. Probably nearer to four hours. So I don't know why I'm there being like, oh, no, it's so sad. When actually, you know, it's time to pack it up, fun. <laughs> but that was sick. And that, as the ending, oh, it's sad. Yes. And I... It is a sad ending. I think, like Cass said at the start, when I read what she wrote, she said... The ending is still sad, or <laughs> I shouldn't say that at all. But you know, she said something along the lines of that. Yeah, attempts to create order from chaos, but never reaches the goal. It's probably a bleaker album because it arrives back where it starts with the same emotion. The album begins somewhat damaged and ends ripe with decay. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yes, yeah, somewhat damaged and then ripe with decay. Just complete. Oh, it's absolutely devastating and tragic. Ultimately, very, very real and true. Not everything is a happy ending. Fortunately, it is a happy ending because Trent is still with us and doing really well. I wonder how he's doing, actually. Let's have a look. Trent Reznor, how is he? <laughs> How's he doing? Yeah, Reznor has been open about his struggles with alcohol addiction, which had a significant impact on his life. He has since sought help and overcome his addiction. I hope that doing by doing that, he um, overcame a lot of his depression as well. I really would hope so. There's something here that says, Trent Reznor, I'm not the same person as I was 20 years ago. Trent Reznor is known as a detail guy, a meticulous composer and manipulator of sound. Oh yeah, you could say that again. Layers upon layers of it. From his band Genesis 25 years ago, the leader of Nine Inch Nails has been known for songs of deep, menacing pain, rage and self-destruction. Today, Reznor's dark days of alcohol and drug abuse are behind him and he finds himself at 48 with a wife and... With a wife? With a wife? With a wife and two young kids. That's so sweet to hear. The t new Nine Inch Nails album, Hesitation, marks ends a hiatus that Reznor announced in 2009. And as he tells NPR's Melissa Block, he sees the new record in part as a reaction to his earlier self. He recently spoke, oh, is this good? I'd like to know if it's good. <laughs> I'd like to know if it's good. He recently spoke with Block about reacting to criticism, working with Lindsay Buckingham, and the reason he thinks opening for Guns N' Roses in Germany was a big mistake. Hear the radio version at the uh, audio link and read more of their conversation below. Okay, it's like a whole conversation, but I'm glad that he is doing better. That makes me really happy. Um, that was in, that this was posted in 2013. So he's got to be like, what, like 
well older now. <laughs> I mean, not doing the maths. I'm like, well older, I suppose. I just want to know how he is, you know. So he apologised to his record label, one handing in nine inch nails down her, her, her spiral. He said, I felt the record was so uncompromising. The downward spiral, it was an album that I needed to make, but it wasn't reactive to fuck you, forgive me, but I'll show you. I remember I turned it in and I said, sorry, you shouldn't have let me do what I was going to do. Reznor told the outlet. Elsewhere in the interview, the musicians spoke about the Diamond Spiral's closing track, Hurt, explaining that it was just an honest thing. And, and didn't I just say that about him, that he's very real, very authentic? I wanted to make it so you really kind of couldn't hear me sing, he said. It was meant to not be a separate noise through the whole thing, so there was no chance it could have a commercial life. It was an honest thing. There wasn't even meant... It was. There wasn't even meant to be a song lyrics even. It was just how I felt and I felt desperate when I wrote it. It gets to the core. It really does. And now it's such a popular song. <sighs> See, that's the thing, like, your pain, like, out on paper and music, for you feels like just a release, you just need it out. And you feel like it's just, like, nothing to anyone else. But actually it's sometimes everything to everyone else because it's so potent and real and you know what a great thing to be especially back in the 90s I feel like we're still learning to be real now so yeah beautiful but yeah it seems like he definitely has you know felt a lot better which is bloody lovely to hear really happy to hear it and I, I am interested in that album that is like almost a reaction to like his darker days but yeah, wow, I don't even know what to say. I've just gone through 23 songs there. Yeah, I'm just going to go through and um, just go over the tracks and say which ones are my faves and so on, even though that's going to be kind of hard to remember now because there's so many songs. But yeah, Somewhat Damaged was a start. Really liked it. Remember when I, it was crazy at first because obviously I thought it sounded terrible, but I was like, oh, I'll an artistic choice and I was just kind of going with it until I realised... My headphones were just being weird. Um, and then I absolutely loved it. I was like, this is more like it. Actually, I was really excited by it because of that whole situation. Then the day the world went away. I think it, I said something like it felt like freedom or something in it. I really liked that one. Um, then we had The Frail, which is an instrumental track, which was good. Then we had The Wretched, which was really, really cool. I really felt like I was just getting properly into it then. Like... It takes some time to really get into it. But when that one came out, I was like, oh my God, I realise how much I'm actually enjoying this so far. And before songs in, I've liked every song. And this was a banger. So then we're in this together. Yeah, another good one. Um, felt almost romantic. And like, a you know, seeing just like a little bit of a different side that wasn't all doom and gloom, even though it was definitely based around doom and gloom. Um, then The Fragile, which was about... A, a someone he cares about and wanting to protect them and let them not fall apart. Really good. Um, just like you imagined. Yes, I can't remember. Yeah, just like you imagined. I think that was another instrumental track and it, that one went off. It was absolutely chaotic, ferocious. All of it, I loved it. Even deeper, felt like it just kept getting deeper and deeper, going deeper into his depression. Pilgrimage was an interesting one. It had like weird movie sounds in it, kind of. Um... I think I just heard some thunder outside, you know. It's certainly raining out there. Spooky. Then we had um, No You Don't, which I really liked. It was a bit more metal. Well, actually, there's been loads of metal moments throughout, but like that one, I really liked that one. It was good. Then Le Mer with the Creole French, that was good. The Great Below was fantastic. So deep and beautiful. I'd say my faves on this uh, disc is Somewhat Damaged, um, The Wretched, the Fragile, just like you imagined, even deeper. No, you don't. The Great Below. Yeah. I think those are my faves. Obviously, it's hard to tell right now. But yeah, this too. The Way Out is Through, bloody brilliant. Absolutely loved it. Into the Void, absolutely loved it. Um, Where is everybody? Really good as well. The Mark has been made really good. I really like the way that one would like surge and then like pull back. Yeah, I like that. Please, really good. Starfuckers, really good. Complication. Oh yeah, that one gave me the doors at the start there. Yeah, that was good. 
I'm looking forward to joining you finally. It was very beautiful and sad, but really good with the drums. The big come down, also brilliant. Underneath it all, um, really good. Ripe with decay, fantastic. They're all just, uh, I don't know what to tell you. They're all good. But my favourite was probably... I really liked the feeling that the way out is through and into the void gave me like immediately. It was just such an immediate feeling. Uh, but I think I just really liked all these, but like some obviously stood out more. It's hard to say right now, guys. You'll have to ask me again in the comments or something, or maybe I could put them in the comments. I don't know if I'm ever going to really figure it out. Not for a while anyway. They're all too good. What I will say though is I genuinely feel like I loved these songs on this these two discs, this album, more than Downward Spiral. And I love the Downward Spiral, so that's crazy to say, but I really feel like I like this one even more. It went even harder, it went even deeper, it went darker, it went, like, all the sounds were just so perfect. Everything about it, the production was just so fucking flawless. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Do become a patron if you can. Obviously, I'm going to be spending ages editing this now. Um, I'll try and get it out as quick. Hopefully, I get it out in bloody October. Because, you know, that's the point of me dressing like this. Even though I feel like I've kind of fallen apart and deteriorated by now. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoy. Do become a Patreon if you can. It really does help so much. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. Like, comment, subscribe. All those lovely things. And I shall see you next time. Bye.